3-2-1. of Westminster School Owner for a signed plan, a uh, signed permit for installation of an 11 square foot plus or minus freestanding sign at 995 Hot Meadow Street. Is someone here to speak for the applicant? Would you mind coming up to the podium? Say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my name is Jeff Gowd, I'm plant manager at Westminster School, and uh, I'd like to thank the committee for considering our application here for our sign. Um, what we're basically hoping to do is replace the existing sign that's there currently with basically a mirrored sign of what's there with a different bit of lettering, not just block lettering. We're going with that style, um, and not much is changing. It's got ground illumination, it's not lit by itself, and uh, it will have a ground, uh, an existing, uh, bedding area around the base of it like that's there it's thing right now so literally the same it's sign the same place pretty much the same illumination yeah. there's no real um greenery to discuss or landscaping rather it's there right now so as is um so let's just keep moving forward quickly anka do you have any comments for that or questions because the, the one that's currently there is really tired and beaten up. It it's, doesn't look good at all, and it's and it's on our my personal agenda and as well as the school's agenda. It just it looks tired. So I'm trying to get some curb appeal along with a new sign. Just made me feel really old and paranoid. Hey, <laughs> I've been there for 32 years, yeah. and uh, it's getting up there in my own. Believe me, I, I feel your pain. Right. All right, Jolene, any questions or comments? No, I might miss the whole side. You want it? <laughs> <I'll take> it. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? I don't know yet. We I'll take no, it. it. It's a little tired. It's, yeah, uh, I'll put it on the wall. It'll be great. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving now. Polly? Uh, if, if you don't want the sign, the Historical Society might like it. Uh, okay. Oh, they can <laughs> so, have it. And second, just a question, same post? Uh, no, it's going to be a metal post. It's has a wooden post that's currently there. It's going to be a three by four inch metal post painted white. What color metal? White. So it will look similar? It'll look pretty much the same. Okay. What's and what's the top of the post like? The top is going to have a gold ball on the top like that's there currently. Okay. Uh, so it won't look that much it, different. I just want to make sure there's nope. and we'll no, do, nothing that we don't see on that. that um, no. Um, I have given a drawing. Is it possible to see have. the top of the post? I have this if you want to. Because I don't have that. That's done? I just like the whole picture. Okay, that answers my question. That looks good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but this one has the gold. Okay, I just wanted to see the whole picture. Thank you. And what we were doing was we were going to take a white uh, board and we're going to etch the black lettering in and have it smooth with the white board and then the crest and the... Um, is going to be bumped out a quarter inch, so it gives a little bit of depth, mm -hmm. but the lettering is going to be flat. So that's our intention. Okay, thank you. And Kate, do you have any questions or comments on this application? I don't think so. We should go ahead. Okay, with that being said, I'd like to close the application. Would someone like to uh, make a referral? Perhaps so. Uh, I'll make a motion for a positive referral regarding application ZC23-08 of Westminster School owner for a sign permit for installation of an 11 square feet plus or minus freestanding sign at 985 Hot Meadow Street as presented to us this evening. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you for your time. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Moving right along, applicant ZC-23-06 uh, of Project Expeditors Consulting Corp, applicant Bank of America Corp, owner for a site plan amendment for facade changes, landscaping upgrades, and site work at 740 Hop Meadow Street. Is Hi, how are you? Thank are you, you very much. Good afternoon. I am uh, Brian Poisson with Approach Architects. Um, so working, we are working on behalf of the bank. Um, 
that's the best sheet to take a look at is the 0020. So there should be three, three series of drawings on that sheet. Yeah, that one. Perfect. Um, so we had submitted a narrative as part of our application. And in a nutshell, we're painting some trim, cleaning some brick, uh, cleaning some asphalt shingles, um, installing a dumpster enclosure, and installing a guardrail fence um, on that existing masonry wall. Um, so I'll sort of run through the narrative that we had put together. Um, so we're replacing, repairing, and painting the existing facade upper trim with the bank standard color, uh, which are these two colors here. This is the P15 that's noted on the drawings, and then this is the exterior paint 16. So Do one you sort of the back to us or no? The... Pardon? That's the front of the shape. The so one's oh, a whitish and one's a little, about that. a little lighter gray. So not earth shatteringly colorful. Um, so if you're looking at the top series of drawings. Uh, or photographs. So it's the existing conditions on the left-hand side and the proposed on the right-hand side. Um, I know they're not drastic changes, but as I mentioned primarily, it's cleaning up some of the staining that's on the existing masonry. Um, the upper portion, sort of all the soffit trim is gonna be this lighter, whiter color. Um, and then around, there's wooden panels sort of below the existing aluminum glazing system, and those panels are gonna be the, this gray, gray color. Um, and then if you look on the upper drawing, there's an existing retaining wall. So right now it's a hazard because there's no, you could essentially trip and fall into the, the space below. Um, so we're adding that guardrail um, railing on top of the existing masonry. And our plan is for that railing system to match the existing uh, railing systems that it's at the entry and at the ADA ramp. So the style stylistically will be the same and then it'll be the same color. And it's like a reddish. Yeah, it's sort of like that coppery. Okay. Yep, exactly. And it's like a deep brick metal. It is a metal railing, okay. yep. Um, and then the last major piece uh, we're talking about is providing two pieces. Um, there's an existing dumpster on site and it's a little unsightly. So we're going to be providing a wooden uh, dumpster enclosure to, to conceal that from customers and from the, from the site. So that, uh, if you flip to drawing C5, it's going to be towards the bottom. Right there. So that upper left-hand corner shows, we're gonna be putting down, uh, setting it on a concrete pad. It's gonna be that wooden um, on three sides, and then it'll be a gate to access the dumpster from the, the front side. Um, and then the drawing to the right of that, sort of the middle shows the proposed railing system that we're putting that's gonna match the existing railing of the side of the, of the entry of the building. Um, and then we are improving some of the landscaping. So if you go up a drawing to C4, so you can see the areas that are bubbled. Yeah. That's right. So there's existing uh, landscaping sort of around the uh, existing entry stair and the ADA ramp. We're just extending it slightly because it's a little barren and it's been worn. So you can see the new uh, plantings that are going to be on the left-hand side. We're putting some on the <coughs> right-hand side of the building to screen a little section and then in the upper piece. So there's a, sort of those three landscape areas that are going to be improved. Um, and then at the very top of the drawing, you can see where the existing dumpster sort of sits and we're going to be uh, providing that enclosure at that location. Um, there's also existing bollards that are on site that right now are a high vibrant canary yellow. Um, and we're going to be sleeving those in the bank standard. Um, I'm sorry, what's the word you used? Ball uh, bollards. So I don't know. I don't know what that is. Oh. So those are concrete posts that prevent you from backing into. So they're things. yellow, and they're right now be... they're existing yellow. Mm -hmm. um, if you could go to the second sheet from the top. Yeah. One more. 
then on the towards the left a little bit. That was it. Um, and then uh, keep going a little bit more. So right there, so that bollard cover. Oh, okay. So bollard. essentially, instead of having the bright yellow, we're going to be sleeving them so they have that uh, gray look with the reflective uh, rights, uh, red stripes. So that's the. Could that's you repeat the what the coverage of on the new dumpster enclosure is again? Uh, three sides is going to be wood. Um, so and then we have a metal system that's the gate and has some lattice. In and what color is the wood? The wood is going to be natural. Okay, that can be anything. What color natural? Like light, dark? Yes, light. Light. Yep. So it's cedar. Uh, I think that's because light will than, just get stained. I'm just wondering if it should just that be was done our intent, but we, we go yeah. darker that way. It kind of goes with the brick we're, of the building. I don't know what everybody. We are thinks. amenable to to your your preference. Yeah. I think light will just kind of make it pop more than you want it to. Okay. Just so pop. you want us to stain it dark. Yeah, like I, th I think a, a dark will make it more um, disappear, non-visible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and this gate system, what color or? or so, um, if you go to that, I think it was on C, t -t 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 C five. So yeah, so that is a metal system, and then we were using black PVC. So silver metal? Uh, black. Black metal. Yeah. Okay. So I think that would go better with the, with the dark, the dark wood enclosure. Agreed. That kind of all would kind of get masked that way. Yep. Is there a reason that you wouldn't consider putting the same? It looks like stockade fencing attached to the metal frames is. Yeah, I, so the bank ha the bank has some standards. So this is in line with what they have done at prior locations. Um, and it's their preference just because the usability and how often it's yeah, a little that's, more durable. That's a non answer. The metal frame is a metal frame, and something is attached to the metal frame mm -hmm. that we see. Mm -hmm. And you are uh, referencing a black plastic, which PVC, but still. Yep. Yep. Um, is actually prone to cracking and breaking versus wood has a little give and take. That's why I mention it. I don't, and it almost looks, I see it's like a lattice, but it looks more like chain link with your picture depicting it, which makes me a little more concerned seeing as that's the front of it. I you mean, can I'm see through that I, is what you mean, Stephen, right? Not just that you can see through it, that it's, I mean, maybe I'm just missing the the image, but it does not look like something the bank would feel strongly about protecting as a trademark. And many dumpster enclosures, you mimic the fourth side, what's on the other three sides. That's more typical in fashion in our town. Does it, You don't have to do it. I'm just saying that. Yeah, so matters. what that is, so that's a wire mesh. Right, so you can see the note, it's a nine gauge steel wire mesh, uh, which has a black vinyl coating. Yeah. <laughs> but can you see through the mesh? Mm -hmm. So you'll see the, you'll see the dumpster. Well, I mean, it's a tighter weave. Uh, but if you had it all wood, then you wouldn't be able to see the dumpster at all. I think is what Stephen's getting at. Yeah, I'm gonna end up, unless, uh, we, we still need to go through everyone, so let's sure. not center on something yeah. I said. Let's see what other uh, comments and questions we have, Anka. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, just to back up a little bit, you already approved the big signage on the brick walls. We did that. The, okay. Today is some it's incidental, the, the yeah. guard reeling yes. along the platform. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but even the material, can you, can you think it's a little bit more 
so uh, let me interrupt you. So this is August Hayes with CBRE, who's I'm the, the project manager for the bank. I have to represent the bank. Um, we could put, we could change it up the wood, not a big deal. But if you drive down Iron Horse Boulevard, the, the, this bank, the property next door is the only two that actually have an enclosure. The rest of the properties next door have absolutely zero enclosures. So this is really an upgrade in, in comparison to what's not. Do you like that better? This is this is actually next door to the bank. We could put this, we could put this actually. Anything. I mean, I, I'm not in the position. Yeah, you see, I definitely want to do that. that. I mean, anything. Okay. If you don't mind. Oh, you to come oh no, wait. No, no, we want to see, we want to see what that this is. This is actually right next door to the bank. Something a little bit more processed. Like that's said, attractive. That's, that's more attractive. Yeah, that's, like I said, uh, um, for the rest of the street, that's the only other one that has an yeah. enclosure on it. So we can do that and make it with the darker stain, though, I still contend. Yeah, like a stain yeah. close to the color of the brick of the building that would be kind of invisible almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a substantial. So this would be four sides consistently, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. So we could do that yeah, on the. Nice. Did you see it, Joan? Do you want to touch it, feel it? I do like it. <laughs> Sorry. I, I do like it better than the stuck. Yes, I agree. That's, that's perfectly fine. No, that's yeah, perfect. that's right. Okay. And if it's that close, it kind of, it, not even if it's not the same property, it kind of has a consistency to it in yes. that locale. Sure. Which is good. Okay, let's keep going. Jolene, do you have any questions or comments? I agree with the closure that's being passed around. Okay. Okay, great. Polly, do you I have any I already said my, my uh, idea. Kate, did I ask you? Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just, wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm sorry. I'm saving it. <laughs> what um, no, I, I think what it, questions does, or comments do I don't have? have questions. Um, we already did the sign. I think there was a thing in the sign about making sure that the paint colors were consistent. So just to say that I hope the paints that you've selected are read well with the signs that are already approved. Because that was, yes, I think, all of the... something that we talked about in the last one. And um, I think that's it. The uh, last piece, which you thank you for reminding mm -hmm. me, is the lights fixtures. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so if we go to uh, a the one dot two zero. So um, can you go back into the drawing set? <laughs> we can do it all. No, no, but I can show you on the drawing where oh, the okay. sign we're talking okay. about. Okay. Right, we don't, you were there. Right there. Oh. One more up. One more up. So, no, that, right okay. <laughs> so the upper right-hand drawing, see the new sign, the bigger sign on the mm -hmm. upper right drawing on the left side of the drawing. Mm -hmm. So the bank is asking us to illuminate that sign. Um, so we provided two options that we were hoping and that's the only location for this for this fixture correct yes. okay so we yep. have just the one spot yep. is it going to be centered or no because it's like not centered well, that might be so where that's, it is. that's where it is now yes yeah, so um centered so over that upper, the right Can hand corner is that, that what i'm looking at no it's above bank of america above the of so oh the is... second Okay, you said upper right hand. Oh, yes. oh the first so picture. So the first. So we were looking yeah, to do next? like okay. three of the fixtures. Okay, I want to be clear first on which, which one we're looking at: the front of the building or the side of the building. Okay. Okay. See how it's there on the corner there? Yeah. That's where you want to put it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that is yeah, preferred. It's a little odd. And the, the picture. Is... The picture doesn't have. So it, there, we have two fixture options. Um, okay. So it's, there's sort of a more 
modern version of the gooseneck, right? Because yeah. we have to come yeah. out and provide light, but we didn't want a classic. It's not a classic building. Yeah. Um, I feel like I like the second one. Too. So there's the first one, and then yes. there's... Yeah. Unobtrusive. Yeah, so yeah. that, that one, so we probably did one that like matches some of the... Okay. Same pictures. So those okay. were the two options. That we wanted the, to both would be bronze. Both choices yes, would be exactly. in bronze. Mm -hmm. exactly. And there would be three across the top, down lighting onto the sign, like angled... Correct. So okay. and, then and then nothing will be on the side of the building? Correct. So okay. that, that sign will be not lit? Correct. There's an existing fixture there that's remaining. Oh, so it will be so lit. It will be lit. I think yes. that's it's, light. it's existing lit. I'm sorry? Oh, no, I'm saying it doesn't have okay. Yeah, so what you see in those who, that the middle drawings okay. is, is existing. If you're going to change lamps on the front, wouldn't you want the ones on the side to match? It's no, a floodlight, isn't this it? Is just, this is the back light. I believe that light is actually a security light. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's actually, it's actually it's security like it's, light. So it's not about the sign, it's, about the sign. it's just about the security. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion for a positive referral on application ZC23-06 of Project Expedited Consulting Corp, applicant Bank of America Corp owner for a site plan amendment for facade changes, landscape upgrades, and site work at 740 Hot Meadow Street with the further definition that we switch the dumpster enclosure to the one shown on Railroad Street, painted in a darker shade, perhaps stained in a darker shade, perhaps mahogany in color, and also the addition of three bronze fixtures on the front Bank of America sign, and last but not least, the railings as pictured and presented. It's the second one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. aye. It's unanimous. Thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Have Appreciate a great it. night. Do you want this back by chance? No. Oh. Do you want this? I'll take that too. Thank you. Do you want this? It's Westminster School Sign. Well, the Historical Society is going to get me that sign. <laughs> yeah, you can have it. I just no, I mean, if you don't it want it, right. no, they, they take all those signs. My walls are tonight, right? I think that's a nice. What do they do with them all? They display them in the in the gift shop or in some of the display areas. Have you been to the gift shop? I'm not sure I have to it's be time to come. I've, I've, I've been at years. the, obviously been to the Historical Society yeah. a number of times. But the gift shop has sure great, some great gifts. gifts. That's what I've heard. I've actually heard that. Yeah. They have like the towny gifts. Yes. And wine glasses with some very young mm -hmm. John. And, you know, all mm -hmm. the bear t-shirts. Okay, let's move along to our um, application ZC 23-03. A Vessel RE Holdings LLC applicant EAY Properties LLC owner for a site plan pursuant to CGS 8-30G for construction of a 55,030 square foot plus or minus 80 unit multifamily dwelling at 446 Hop Meadow Street. Before we get too much further into it, I just want to reiterate um, that this is a 8-30G proposal which means it's affordable housing. Um, we are limited in what we can do here. So we wanna work in concert with the developer to try and make it as aesthetically pleasing as our board's charge as we possibly can. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> um, with that being said, uh, would you like to present, please? Thank you very much. For the record, uh, my name is Peter Alter. I'm a lawyer, I practice law in Glastonbury at the firm of Alter and Pearson. And we are here uh, back again to see you to uh, show some potential changes that we have uh, in response to uh, some of the comments that uh, the committee made uh, at our last meeting. Um, some of the members were not as enthusiastic as we had hoped uh, with the earlier design. So what you uh, have in front of you is a revision to the exterior front of uh, the proposed building where instead of having uh, a single color for the panels that make up the outside of the building, 
what we've done is introduced a second uh, wood grain panel that's um, what I would call a mahogany color. Um, we have the Sam. Great, thank you for bringing it. That one. Um, so that uh, panels between uh, the windows for each of the units would. It's interesting. Have a different, not only different color, but uh, also have uh, some texture appearance to them. Um, we thought that this was uh, a response to the concerns that the committee expressed in terms of the fact that the building appeared to be uh, monolithic uh, in its earlier presentation. And uh, this panelized system that uh, is the exterior of the building, part of the effort uh, to make this a, a net zero building, um, we can make this adjustment to the panels uh, to create a, a different look uh, along the front of the building. Just to rein, in, in, uh, reinform everyone, uh, we're on the easterly side of, of Hop Meadow. The site that we propose to develop is 1.97 acres. The building sits in the rear a portion of that uh, parcel that's outlined in red, uh, about 300 feet back from Hop Meadow uh, Street, and uh, sort of tucked into that L shape that you see to the south. The 2.39 acre piece uh, along the Farmington River is, is part and parcel of this property. Um, if you acquire one piece, you acquire the other. And we propose no development on the easterly side along the Farmington River frontage. Um, there have been some discussions as to whether or not there should be some opportunity for some kind of passive recreation there. Frankly, the topography down to the river is significantly steep. And, and so we do not want to have any impact on that piece uh, as it stands uh, at the present time. We're not proposing to do anything there. Um, we had a discussion about uh, existing uh, mature trees on the site. Um, we had uh, our landscape architect go back out to the site and identify some of the important trees that can be retained. The, trees you see with the red circles um, can be retained and not impacted by the development. We've shifted some things around to make every effort to protect those trees, as well as the vegetation that exists in the red circle in the southwesterly corner towards Hot Meadow Street, um, as well as the uh, vegetation that exists along uh, the bike trail which is immediately to the east of this parcel. Uh, one of the requests that has come from the planning department is that uh, we reserve the opportunity to uh, create a sidewalk along Hop Meadow Street. Uh, everyone is aware that immediately north of this second brook uh, goes, flows to the east towards the Farmington River. So there's a significant change in topography and it might be pretty challenging to get a sidewalk further to the north. But in the event that a sidewalk system is ever installed on the easterly side of Hop Meadow, uh, as it is, some is being installed now on the westerly side, uh, the developer will provide an easement area for the town to be able to install um, sidewalk if it ever becomes part of the sidewalk plan for this part of Hop Meadow Street. Um, I don't think that these uh, drawings necessarily involve you, but I will point out um, a couple of things that we've created a little bigger island um, 
to preserve those. Oh, that was wrong. To preserve those three trees um, here. There's a large tree to be preserved here, and then a large piece of vegetation with some trees in this area that will remain untouched. Same in this area. So that's the progress we've made since the last time we were here. Um, happy to talk about uh, other aspects of the plan, although you, you really saw all of this uh, in our last visit and we had a um, pretty robust discussion. So with that, um, I, oh, there was a question about lighting. That I'll go back. This is our photometric plan, which shows that there's no light uh, that impacts anybody outside of our uh, property. And um, you can see where the light fixtures are located on the plan. Uh, as members will remember, we do have a three-story um, lighted uh, entryway that, that serves as the access to the property and that is internally illuminated. Uh, there was some concern that light from that would in some way impact anybody, but it uh, does not. It's downward lit and it's fully in, enclosed within that uh, entryway. I don't know if everybody was uh, or everybody understood fully what that uh, entryway consists of is, is open to the air, it's a, a screen that uh, allows air to pass through, but does not uh, allow any moisture, rain, or whatever to uh, get inside that area. But it is open in terms of the fact that it is uh, breathable space. Um, so with that, we're happy to answer any questions. Josh Levy, who from Vessel, is here. Um, if you have specific questions. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you have an interest in what the units look like on the inside. Um, it's out of our purview. Okay. I'm sure you're going to get a chance to do it do later this evening. Yeah, I, I want to know so bad. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> but it's out, go of ahead, then. it's out of our purview, Satisfy but I have the, concerns uh, with the amount of window that each unit has. So okay. that's just separate. So um, this is the one bedroom layout where uh, the large window is in the bedroom and then uh, the door into the hallway is translucent so that um, the, the light in the hallway also uh, has access to the property even though they obviously can't see through the glass. You may recall that um, there's a skylight arrangement that and uh, opportunities for the light to get into each uh, level of the building uh, from the from the roof down. How does that how does that work when it's stacked the way that it is uh, so in this type of arrangement? <clears throat> Josh Levy for Vessel. Um, so in the hallways, the, the top of the interior uh, hallway mm -hmm. and the top of the um, entry court are both um, skylit, the entire mm -hmm. area. Well, what about the and then the And then within the corridors, there are um, light shafts that bring the light from the top all the way down so that all the uh, different levels. And then even the, even the material that is used for purposes of the um, the floor in those stairwells has the ability to pass light through as well. But by the first floor, there it's kind of dissipated. There's not a whole lot of light getting into those first floor apartments through those translucent I mean, doors. The, the, the light is going, well, the first floor is going to get you know light as well from the uh, from the entry corridor, um, as well as from the uh, from the side staircase, both of which you know we, uh, are bringing in natural light as well. How does it get light from the side staircase into the first floor? So it's also a, those, those are both all of those. All floors are getting light, both from the upper floor that's allowing it through through the light shafts, through the entry court, which you know is translucent, bringing in light there, and then the staircase on the other side of the building also has a translucent uh, effect, like a window effect, to bring light. So it's like into the hallway. Mm -hmm. All the hallways. Yeah. 
So, um, this is uh, an actual unit that uh, we have photographs of. This is the living room and the translucent entry door. This is uh, the pass passway from the living room to the bedroom and, and the doors open up so that the light can uh, come from the bedroom forward. This is the bedroom. Um, and then uh, we've been through this before. I'm not gonna go through it again, but uh, as we indicated, this is a fully sustainable building um, and, and the efficiencies and effort uh, to create that opportunity are really what drive the design uh, of the building to make it the most uh, efficient building possible. That's been the effort by Vessel over the last two and a half years as it, as it makes its uh, building designs. So these are views before we, we obviously didn't ask our renderer to change the look of the building. Um, this is from the street, some of the trees that are gonna be retained. Um, I am not gonna to represent to you that every tree you see in this picture is being retained. That's just not accurate. Um, but uh, a significant number of trees uh, are gonna be retained as we showed on the earlier plan. Happy to answer any questions. Can you show me where the bike rack is and like the bike enclosure for the all the biking that people are going to be doing since they don't have places to park? Mm. I can so that was <laughs> Josh, you want to point out? I think it's in the very upper right of the building, right there is the bike rack. That's the bike rack. Is it enclosed? No, it's an external bike rack. What do they do in the winter with their bikes? People store their bikes in different ways. Um, we don't have existing bike storage. We don't have the rest. Okay. And there's been no um, like picnic area created on any of this land, this open space, you we've know, this, or fire pit or any outside, you know, place to hang out. Yeah, so we, we, we are open to putting in, um, you know, passive recreational uses. We think the best place for them is at the top of the other piece of property on the other side, as these two, the two other places are outside windowed areas. That also would allow us to make the area that we so they're, they're fencing along that um, part of the path on both sides. Um, At least there is on the um, the west or the east side. On the west side, it might be a split rail. I have, to, but it's it, it, right now. There's no um, way to get to that other piece of property unless you walk over to Mitchell and go down a path that's there. But there's a, there's a fence all along on the east side of the property, of, a, of the trail. A, there's a stockade fence in some areas for, uh, for, for one of the sides. Um, there's breaks in the stockade fence. Like, yeah, but, okay. I just walked it last week and there's there's no break along the, the equivalent, or the frontage of this. There's no break along the other side. So, so just, just so everybody's clear, obviously we don't own the bike trail that's owned by the state of Connecticut as far as I know. Um, and we would have to engage in a discussion with the state of Connecticut to, um, first of all, to create an access onto the bike trail, but also um, if that fence was erected by the state, we would have to talk to them yeah, about Yeah, I, I don't know who owns it either, but I think it's important to have access to the outside for this these apartments. Um, the lighting, <coughs> this, the natural light is limited based on one window per unit. 
especially it's in the bedroom and not in the living space. So I'm thinking it's important to consider creating outdoor recreation space for the residents that live in this property. We, we agree with you. Um, we, we had identified, as, as Josh said, that area that is um, opposite and part of land that is all that comes with this property. We also identified an area here that's a, that's a lawn area and is away from um, the buildings. As Josh said, the first floor is going to have residents whose windows will open up along where that, that hedge is. Um, so we don't want to intrude too much into their privacy either. So it could be this area. But the better spot is, we think, is over here. Yeah, we think that also gives people the opportunity to create something so that people who are biking or walking or running, if they wanted to stop and drink water and sit on a bench or something like that, it gives that community recreation space as well. Okay, but currently it's not part of your plan. That's what I'm You're making, not, making note of. That's correct. It is not on our plan at this moment. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Um, projects that you've completed to kind of give us examples of how the tenants used those, like how it worked out there. That would help us like figure out what type of guidance we want to include for our community. Yeah, um, so what we get familiar is uh, in the places where we've done vessels, there aren't uh, outdoor amenities and people haven't utilized them. Having owned and managed 20,000 apartment units, I can tell you that I'm yet to see more than 1% of my tenants use any of the amenities there in the building or any outside of the building, um, which is why we think it's very important to be careful about what you put in because they become an ongoing maintenance and upkeep issue without the benefit of improving tenants' lives. So, you know, the last building, one of the last buildings that we, you know, owned and managed was a 638 unit building. Um, we had you know, probably the most extensive uh, amenity package I've ever seen. Uh, multiple gyms, you know, playrooms, things like that. Out of our 638 residents, 38 people use the amenities, both indoors and outdoors. So, um, you know, we, when we think about, you know, amenitization, we want to really think about, you know, what it is that the tenants are going to actually utilize, what's going to be important. I think, as I said, you know, based on that, I think you know, having something that's like, you know, picnic tables or a gazebo or something like that is, are things that we're certainly open to, to doing and incorporating into, into the plan. Um, I think that they can have a nice, you know, impact on it. I think, you know, things like fire pits, we, we don't like putting in. They, you know, they're a lot, a huge liability issue, um, you know, for, for purposes of, you know, both fire and, you know, safety and other, uh, other issues associated with them. But, but from, for, for other things, we're certainly you know, happy to try to figure out how to incorporate them in. Um, as we also see how the site you know, lays out, you know, one of the things we want to think about is, we do this on all of our properties, is where's the optimal place once the building you know, is in situ and you see the landscaping, what sort of actually lends itself to the right spot for everything. Because things look good on a plan that don't necessarily look good once you see everything in person and you see you know, the way things are sort of you'll actually show up in real life. How many um, of these have you done in like a more rural environment like this? Uh, this is our, this is the first vessel in a, um, in a uh, suburban location. Okay. My 20,000 units, probably 12, five were in suburban, in highly suburban locations, some more, you know, more rural. Is there a lifespan of the 
I mean, somewhat infinite. I mean, all buildings, of course, have a lifespan in terms of the materials they use. We use steel, whereas typical buildings are built using, you know, uh, wood framing. So the lifespan is much longer. All the materials we use have longer longevity than a typical building product. You know, nothing that I can think of is, you know, really under a 30 year, other than, um, other than uh, the, uh, like the, the, the package of, uh, like, dishwashers and things like that, which obviously have a shorter shelf life. Um, but, you know, where our long, the longevity of everything we use is higher than typical construction. Anka, okay, do you have anything you'd like to add at this point? Or, Are you thinking like even the white, even the yes. white, like I don't like the white with, I like the wood, but not the white with it, right? Exactly. It's like too much. I'd rather see it go dark. So are you talking just from my own understanding, the ceiling in the entryway yes. being brown? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the ceiling alone or the side, the crown? It's another it's accent. It's, it's a, it's a, I, I would, I would know. I yeah, the ceiling, the ceiling is a, is, is not the same material. The ceiling is a, um, it's translucent. It's a translucent ceiling, uh, like a, what about uh, the stomach. side wall, though? That would be like even having like an accent down yeah. that entire yeah. side wall of the stairs would be that very elegant. That, yeah, that north that, wall. That side wall in the stair actually is an interior projection inside. So there's there's like a colors that get another design that we get that the ability to project on the white uh, side of that as well as white. Can it be a different color? projecting like a graphic Images? onto there, like a like a lights onto it well, or there's lights that are facing that for, for lighting up so you get down lighting and other things that allow you to so all the lights in the building can you know be customized for colorization purposes so you can create different types of lights and that wall allows you to down light onto it. But that wall is white, correct? Right. It could be a different color though. Then that lighting of that could light work. Oh but if you work with the lighting you could make it a different color. You can yes, make it like blue. blue. Okay. Blue. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the, the, the white just makes it very sterile yeah. and Maybe. stark and stands out against all the greenery. And then during the winter, it would just be like a big ice cube out there. I do like the wood siding, but you know, the, the north wall, and I don't know what the south wall looks like, but um, making it a little less stark yeah. would allow it to be incorporated into the neighborhood. <clears throat> like I would like all the panels that aren't wood to not be white still, like to be another, like a deeper, like a dark steel color or something like that. It would be like more, um, I don't want to make the thing too heavy, but the contrast I'm not like super excited about, or maybe a, light, a lighter wood then, if you're going to do it with white, because this feels very, the contrast feels very high. What do you think? Uh, back to Anka. <laughs>
Do the windows open? I'd like to ask a couple of questions. All right, the down lights that change the appearance of the front entryway, do you change that or is it a one and done? No, no, it changes. It can change. Um, it's lighting, so it's LED lighting. Like but how lighting. often do you actually change it? And you've got four of these now, right? right. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on like, the ability to do different things. We look at all different things all the time in terms of how we can sort of improve the way buildings function. And which we're on board with, but we're a conservative community. So <clears throat> as much as I like a tie dye, I well, think I that as really the really backdrop of the tie dye, you're ah. asking us to give you a blank slate to do whatever with the color imaging. Whereas they were talking about a darker color, the free, the understanding that you might be projecting infinite images onto it is a little bit. Um, I'm just a little bit paranoid, just to be upfront with you. It seems undefined. Well, you're, you're talking about you know, the projection of lighting options. So it's no different than what you would uplight the Empire State Building or downlight like the Empire State Yep, <laughs> which is fine if that's what it is. The term images, I believe, was used at one point, and it's three quarters, or rather two thirds, of one side. So we're not talking about an entryway that's, you know, the stairwell. Yeah, about, but what, what I'm talking about is, you know, projection of, of uplighting. That You're probably coming back, right? Yeah. Are you coming back to us, or are you hoping this is the final? I'm just curious. <laughs> I, you know, you'll have to give me feedback. I'm not sure what else we can really do. Well, it's hard for us to imagine this infinite possibilities, because all you've told us is it's infinite, but you've given us no definition of what it looks it allows like. allows for the downlighting and up or uplighting of colorization for purposes of lighting. It's no different than any LED light that you know exists. The light doesn't outside the building is an interior light that, you know, is... So you can't see it from outside the building? You can't see it from... I mean, if you when you see it from the parking lot? Off our, off of our site, you would not see it. Even if you looked at the building when you were driving by, you would not see it? You would see the hue of a color. And therein so lies the differentiation. Like like the blue lights out in front, or, you know, like right. when the counter will do stuff like oh, that, so it's going to be whatever color, and then they can probably be different colors, so they could do, like, whatever. But I think it's a more urban thing. It's a more urban thing. And I would rather yeah. see a more natural That's wall what I'm that saying. have those more lights myself. I'd rather... Um, just, I think the building would look more beautiful colors, for this environment. Flashing. Oh, it's not um, a light show. If you got to like, say that. It's not, a, it's not a light show. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about just the, the bathing <coughs> of it in, in, a, in a light that allows for it to be a pleasant hue of light. How, how often does a light color change? Only is if it's is it only be when you change it or is it on a like no, oh today we want green tomorrow a, we want no, blue I don't know that's yeah, why I'm it's asking. Not a glass with the colors. It's just it, it, we, we would have to we would have to change the color of the lighting in the same way that you have to do on any building, which you can do in any building whatsoever. You can put in light bulbs that allow for colorization. You can do it with landscape lighting. 
this is just bathing the wall in uh, in, in a potential in a potential hue of color so that it feels warmer or cooler depending on the time of year or something like that to make it a more pleasant ambient experience. I don't have a photo. We haven't. Ch I, I can tell you I haven't sh really changed. But an alternative is just to pick a color, like a light yellow or you know a warm light. And, and make that wall be something more muted and not as stark as what we're looking at right now. If you have feedback on the accent color of white instead of it being white being a different color, I'd be happy to look at a different color instead of the white. That would then drive what color that interior wall was. Because that could be changed, that interior. Could I take a look at the book? Okay. So we'll be doing that. I, I got a couple other questions. The um, thank you. The I'm trying to think. The demolition plan. Ba plan basically, there's a couple uh, trees that are being demolished. That I was just wondering if we could consider not demolishing them. Um, so the double X in the top left corner seems outside of. <clears throat> any building or pavement or potential for disrupting such. And they're twin 18 inch oak trees, which means they're both about 60 years old. And I don't honestly understand why those would be taken down because those are also going to obstruct the um, building's view from the road, which uh, not that we don't like your building, but I thought we agreed that hiding it would work. So, um, I don't understand why I would get rid of them. So I'm talking the top yeah, left, the double X. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's twin 18 inch yeah. oak trees, which are desirable. If they were pine, I'd say knock them down, but they're oak. Or at least that's what's defined on the plans. I mean, if, if, I, I'm sure they show those as potentially demolished because they're so close to the road and there's um, site requirements for purposes of uh, CTDOT. But if they don't have to be demolished for either the construction or the site uh, lines, I'd be absolutely thrilled to keep them. Okay, and we'd be thrilled for you to keep them. <laughs> um, there is one other tree that potentially, I was wondering if we could do a bump out or something. So on the top level, the setback line, you can see one X. That is a 40 inch oak, which means it's 120 years old. You, the point of the cursor is right near it, yes. Um, I don't know if it could, uh, I don't know the depth of the spots, meaning the parking spots off the top of my head, but it looks like there's enough room with a potential that... I think that's right on the... So this, God bless, so this is a... That transfers, I believe. This is a retaining wall. Right. This but, is a retaining wall. But I believe the setback line is consistent on both plans to draw it visually. So you've got... A couple feet. Yes, this is, it looks like this is sitting on the on the on the line where, like, going over where the parking spot is. Go back to the other thing. So we have this push pole that we have to deal with. Push pole. I'm sorry. We have uh, people in the commission. We're going to see next questioning whether or not we have enough parking spaces. Right. So if we eliminate one or two spaces to save this tree, we'll have to I'm not saying eliminate. We wow. could do it with a non-pervious um, treatment in that area that the roots haven't did affect it. It's, I think the problem is that you're gonna be grading, you're gonna be grading all around here. So what what I've been told by, you know, other, other commissioners <coughs> of the landscape is the minute you start grading in that area, you negatively impact the root system that's there, which ultimately kills the tree. Um, I would say, you know, again, like if you know, if if in situ we're able to keep it, I'd be fine with keeping it. Obviously, you know, I don't have any you know desire to take down trees unnecessarily. They're costly to take down, also. Um, so you know, if we're if they're able to save something like that, I'm certainly happy to give them direction to try to save that when they're in the field. Okay, let's leave that one there. The um, the next thing that I wanted to comment on, I, I lost track of what I was going to comment on. 
uh, to your benefit. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we had discussed either doing a berm or potentially a rock wall along the road. And so we can't do that and save the trees that are there because the minute we start pushing Yeah, back, you didn't say that before. Now you're... Um, well, we, <laughs> are, well, we, well, we How had, about a rock, lock, rock, rock wall until you get to the trees and leave the trees and put the rock wall on either side of them? The trees are out the street. Yeah, I have the rock wall. Hey, I got a big tree and a rock wall on either side because my tree is probably 300 years old and they built the stone wall probably 299 years ago. And the rock wall is on either side of the trees and the trees in the middle. It's part of the wall. Yeah, so, are you talking about literally like stacking rocks as a wall? Well, yeah, that's what's in my yard, but doesn't mean you can right, like yeah, work around that. I'm sure landscape burn, architects we have a great way to do that. A berm. Right, you just can't, we can't burn and save trees. Like that doesn't, those two things, as soon as you started burning this area here, all of anything that's existing is going to go away. So this tree is going to go away. All of these trees, anything that you're saving here, you have to you lose this the minute you started burning. Yes and no. A berm does not have to be the full width of your streetscape. A berm can be a section of it, which would still, I, I don't lose that. I don't want to lose track of where I'm going. Basically, I'm trying to obstruct the view. So a two-foot berm, which obviously is too small, is still obstructing the view somewhat. So if you go back to your streetscape, there's nothing really obstructing it other than the trees of which you said a lot of trees were left. I'll be honest not to call you out on it, but it's four trees. So, you know, I'd well, rather that, just... And then you're planting, you're planting along here as well. So this is all, this is, you're keeping all of this, you're keeping this, um, you want to try to keep the one over here, um, and then you're planting in here as well. So the minute you start burning this, you, you don't have these, you don't have this landscaping. Can, here. can we switch to the streetscape? Sure. Something like this. So basically, see the monument sign right there? It was there yep. for a minute. Um, and you can see the guardrail. That, that's the area I'm talking about. Not to the left of the driveway as we face it facing east. Um, basically just, I'm not sure how that, is that a monument sign? I don't even know for a fact that that is. That is intended to be where the monument sign would go. Which could go atop a berm, just saying. And there is no suggested plantings, at least from this streetscape, between the tree and that, but there is a full on view of the building and probably the most open view of the building from well, any I think if direction. You, if you look at these landscape plans, which I'll just show it this way, the, the landscape plan has plantings here, then the existing tree here, and then all of this existing here. So if you started, and this is, this is where the, you would be able to burn, you started burning this area, then you, you wouldn't be planting those trees. So we're trying to create cover with the plantings. But there's um, no trees there. I, I guess that's where we're not even connecting. Do you see a tree there? <laughs> I mean, that's that's sort of my point. Identify you. Hi. Hi. Well, right um, yeah, for your name. Early for tomorrow's meeting, but I'm late for this one. I apologize. So, what Josh is Tell them who you are, Tom. Tom Grusseff, I'm a landscape <laughs> architect, Manchester, Connecticut, licensed. <clears throat> this plan is situated the way you're looking at right. the building. The building is about 300 feet back from the street. Correct. These are existing trees which were saving. These three guys and this guy. One of them is a 48 inch oak, 20 inch right. oak, 20, and 20. So these were. So this recently. 24 inch oak is that tree we're looking at right in front of the white car. That's part. I can't. Correct? I can't tell you if that's rendered exactly right, but this tree does but exist. But give her minus a yes. few feet. That's the tree, is it not? And yes, and it's it's branched a little bit high there. It's not quite that high. If you go out and look at it, uh, these would be evergreen. Uh, actually hollies here on this edge. So we're trying to block this in without um, 
messing with the line of sight for somebody pulling out of it. Okay. Uh, I just, I, I, it is, it, it's a beautiful thing to look at. It isn't on the money. There's actually more trees here. There's only one shown before, before the white car there. There's actually two big guys here. This is just 48 inch old, which is quite outstanding. Right now. Yeah, no, that would be great if we could say that that's a hundred years. Birch trees here, these little guys. There's a detention basin. How many inches are those, the trunk? Well, they be um, eight to 10 feet high. So, so they're, oh, they're bigger. Yeah, they're at least that much. And uh, this was meant to be a um, discussion drawing. And so I don't have, I have common names on these, but I don't have the botanicals in this exact sizes. Some shade trees here, which are already adjacent to this, you know, mm -hmm. really forested area going down to the creek. And what, I'm not going to anything else. If you've walked through this, I'll answer anything you have. No, I, I pretty much grasp it. Grasp it all. It just it's something that we discussed at the last meeting was some sort of obstruction on the lower grade level, perhaps the holly or something. Granted, you don't want to obstruct your monument sign, but it looks like there's a fair distance behind it. These guys are these are big holly. Uh, the birches are filling in this gap, which is a, actually a low area, which takes the drainage off of this piece of the parking lot. There's some parking spaces here. The previous plan we had, this was this was further back by about 20 feet, something like that, exactly. But there was a bigger airspace here, if you will. Uh, in this case, we're saving these guys, but um, we're also is that the monument sign. Yes, okay. it's and it's an approximation there. I think we have to be such and such back from the property line, and, and uh, just the traffic coming this way can see it just as well as this one as, as this thing turns here. It's almost as a visible driveway right now. It comes a lot more visible. Can I ask a question about the foliage along yes. the trail, the bike path? Okay. Yes. What, what do you have along there? This is existing. There's, if, if you're out there at some point, this is a very high ridge in the terrain right there. And it's being saved. This is all being saved. Non but you're not adding any new planting. Uh, the, bur the beech trees along both sides of the building are. Is that the red? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize those are trees. Okay. Yes. Well, it's it's uh, red. It's more red. I thought it was the ditch. <laughs> to be yeah, honest. No, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, red elms here. Uh, so there's about. 18 trees here, there's 19 trees here, and they're planted very tight, they're columnar, so it actually is a tree wall. So will that hinder the light coming into the building, really. to the windows? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it, they're only, um, it'll go in probably about nine or 10 feet tall, but the secret is that the branches are very tight and there's airspace here, there's plenty of light. You know, the how, how many, how much space between the building and that row of birch trees? Here there's five or six feet and then the trees. The, the reason why we're, we're doing this is there's only one window in each of the apartments. And it's in a private area in the bedroom. So we need to either do it with evergreens, which is pretty harsh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. these beech trees, oh, which beach, okay. you've seen a purple beech. And they keep their leaves all winter, even though they'll drop in the spring and relief, of course. But uh, so they are acting as close to an evergreen as you can get with this kind of tight space. So there's a sidewalk right here, and we just uh, those trees aren't in that rendering then. No. no, that's another um, screen. Then screen, the yeah. screen from the street it's to the building than what we see. Yes. Just for the board here. Okay, thank you. So I want can I get just back to this what I was looking at in here? Yeah. Was Anka brought up? There are other colors for that wall on the south side or the north side of the building that might um, instead of having you know a color of the month club of the lighting, you could 
choose a color that is more natural looking, stone-like, and a little more muted than the white that it, that is shown which, in your... Um, which one is your preference? Which one? I don't know. We, we kind of like, like these here. This. I like this gray one. I think um, they want lighter. Like oh, even so a soft even wood, even even a soft wood if you soften to the outside. How about that on the outside and inside? Is that something you propose? Yeah, this might be a little too light to read it, um, but like something in the. But, but that general like idea to make it not so yeah. stark on that north side. I yeah, I don't know what the south side is, wood, is intended to look like. Is. So, for people. I don't think you can see the south Blend side. it into the woods, you know? Yeah. I don't know what you ladies yeah, think over there. The contemporary of that. feeling of it. Those were pictured in all fairness. Maybe they were, but I don't it's not here. Rendering. I mean, how much You're right, it's not on this you know? rendering. And then we are asked to choose color and finish it from a, a catalog that we just look at it and say, okay, this is what yeah, we Yeah, and you're not seeing it and on there. I would really like, from a design perspective, to see the building blocked out and not look like one block, but look like different volumes. So the finishes would reflect like the building looking less like one giant box and more like like that stairwell is a volume. Let it be a volume and let it express that way so we can at least have something that breaks up this boxiness. Also to look at all um, elevations, all four sides, mm -hmm. not just the... Not just the west side and the north side. I totally agree, Paul, the, the southern facade, that's the one that the, the, the people, the neighbors, the people who live there, this is what they will yeah. see. Yeah. Don't leave that one unfinished. Oh, yeah, it should it all be consistent. Matter. It should be all consistent, blended with, with the environment, uh, uh, metal colors, as, as you said. I'm sorry, which side did you All four sides. No, I understand that, but the southern side. Yeah. That's this side? Yeah, we, yes, that's the yeah. southern side. We don't yeah, have any We don't have any renderings of that side of the building. I think you do, but it, it's a it's a bland wall. No, we didn't wall. we didn't present them tonight, but we did. Um, Does that those units still don't get more windows even though they are on the ends? Correct. Okay. And then um, I had a question, where do they get their mail? There's a new lobby in With 80 boxes, and then what about like packages and stuff? Because that lobby, like, isn't how large is that entry? There's an Amazon package uh, for 80 people. Okay, so um, <laughs> in the spirit of everyone having a break, if you're doing both meetings, 160 people. Uh, let's sort of close out. I do want to recap some of the notes I wrote, make sure they coincide with the notes you wrote. Um, the recreational space, if we could see it defined in some manner, even if it's just a small clearing, I'm not implying it should be a small clearing, but a uh, gazebo was mentioned, a pavilion was mentioned on the second parcel. If we could see what you are imagining, so we are for sure on the same page, just a little space for the people to expand outside. The fencing along the bike trail, we need definition of if it can be removed. That is... Um, Visually, I, I, I have to be honest, I haven't walked it yet. I will walk by it before the next meeting. However, I'm sure the Heritage Bike Trail wants beautification as much as everyone else. So if we could see what the finished product would look like, because I'm sorry for talking in circles, but your depiction shows no fence. So if the fence can't be moved, can we see it with the fence? If the fence can be moved, can we be assured that will be? And if it can't be removed in its entirety, why can it not be moved? Um, can we also see a night view of what these lobbies look like? There are some of these built, right? Vessels? But, and it's got this lighting that you're speaking of in the front entryway? 
So can we see a, a photo, basically, of what that looks like so we understand what you mean by the up and the down lights in that entryway? Yes. Either. It, Both. It's a little hard for a, I, I know you're so sure of what you see because you know it in your head. We're on the other end. We're trying to figure out what it looks like. We don't know. So just a picture, literally, will allow us that insight of what you're picturing. Okay. And just the updated elevations, which I'm sure you're going to need at some point. Um, showing the actual elevations proposed. I know I did see the, the elevations, but they also do not depict what's being proposed now. We're like honing it down, so we're very close, but you very kindly agree to leave the four trees, which we are appreciative of, but since those are gonna be permanent now, can we convey those onto the elevations so we can see what the view is, as well as the other holly and such, um, so that we can see what the streetscape is, to be quite frank. That's our board, one of our main concerns. Um, and that's it. Thank right. you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, you know, I feel like we made progress. I hope you do too. And we look forward to, you know, bringing it to fruition with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for your time. Okay, with that being said, we have enough time to just quickly go over the approval of minutes for the January 18th, 2023 meeting. Did everyone or anyone have the opportunity to re review those? I didn't see them. Oh, I did see, I did see. Do you have them there? I do somewhere. Bear with me. I didn't get them. So we have to do both of them. This is the one January 18th. This February. Uh, let's give Polly just a second to review those. So, I think January 18th was fine for me. I just, on the... Um, February? Well, let's just do January 18th yeah, now. Okay, sorry. Would you like to make a motion or would someone like to make a motion? We were all present, so... <laughs> okay. Second. All right. And I don't think we need to vote on that, right? We just need a first and second to approve minutes, or do we vote? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, it's unanimous, so that's all set. Moving along, the February 6th, 2023 meeting. Um, My only issue is that I left the meeting early, and I'm, it says that I voted aye to adjourn. It's not a big deal, but I wasn't there. <laughs> Okay, with that noted correction, would someone like to make a motion? I'll just make a motion to accept the minutes <laughs> with the acknowledgement that line 12 okay, on page 2 be amended to show that Polly had left the meeting at that point. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, that's unanimous. And last but not least is... Uh, George or Laura, were you going to speak to us about the guidelines for community design sign direction? Okay, yeah, that's fine with us. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you all for your time. So, F FYI, I, I'm going to be um, on an airplane during the next movie, or movie, next meeting. I'll probably be watching a movie <laughs> on the airplane. <laughs>